So lately the rise in food prices have uh, really created a crisis that a lot of people didn't believe would even happen. But this is something that we need to address. Now, uh, you know, as I go through my phone and go through some of the comments here on the channel or even through emails, I see the same questions. Uh, first, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of questions from people regarding uh, the emergency allotments. Uh, how many states are still going to uh, distribute this uh, even since the public health emergency has been extended. Uh, so I'm going to address that today. I will also go over the states um, you know, as far as their emergency allotment. Uh, and lastly, I want to explain what is going to happen, what can we expect moving forward uh, as far as food stamps? Because that's something that I know a lot of people are wondering is, well, if the public health emergency ends, what does that mean for us? Well, I'm gonna address that. So, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below because like I said, I do go through them. I may not respond with a comment, but most cases I will take your comment and I will create a video from it, okay? Exactly what I'm doing right here. Now, how does the public health, uh, how does the extension of the public health emergency affect EBT benefits? Well, here's what I can tell you. First, some states are going to send out the $95 per month boost due to this emergency declaration. But there is a problem. And that problem is that both the state itself has to have emergency health, uh, the, the uh, public health emergency uh, intact. So does the federal government. They both have to have it for it to match up. But the problem is that many states have already ended their public health emergency. So in essence, just because the United States on a federal level has a public health emergency, this doesn't mean a thing for states that have already ended it. Now, the other issue, and this is something that I've seen lately, is that many people are under the impression that once the public health emergency ends, they will just lose the $95 per month from their emergency allotment, okay? That's not the case, and this is the problem. In many cases, people that are eligible for SNAP benefits, um, but they also earn an income, they are still getting the maximum benefit amount. But when in reality, they should be getting the minimum benefit amount. So I, I touched on this um, you know, over the past few days, really over the past week as well, where a family of three who would normally get you know, the maximum benefit would be like $740 or something like that. Here's the issue. When you take away the $95 um, emergency allotment and then you take away the maximum benefit, a family of three with an income in many cases is going to go from like 300 and or four or they're going to go from like $740 down to 335. So they're going to lose $405 of their benefits more than 50%. That is going to be devastating to millions and millions of families. Now I've talked about this before for millions of, of households, they're just months away from losing 30 to possibly 60% of their benefits. And all because this emergency allotment or this uh, public health emergency is allowing the federal government to distribute maximum funding to all beneficiaries. Okay. So that is something that is happening. That is something that we are expecting. And that is why I warn you. And that's why I also give you, uh, you know, advice from experts where they're saying, if you can find food at a food bank right now, go and get it. Don't wait. And they say this because you can hold on to your benefits. You don't have to use them. You can, you can let them roll over into the next month. They recommend you do that. Go and get some, some food from food banks now and eat that food first. And then you'll, Make sure you can stock up on some money and, and you'll get a little bit of a, of a you know, cash pile in your account. Because then when things get really rough in the next probably three to four months, you can actually withstand that. Okay. Now, what states are, are already approved to send the emergency allotment payments for February? Well, here's something I can tell you. This list is very short. There's six names on it, okay? Six states as of right now. 
Okay, we're in the middle. We're in the middle of January, so there's only six states. As we get a little bit close to the end of January and into February, my my guess is we're going to have a lot more names. But as of right now, these are the only states that are included. There's California, Kansas, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Wisconsin. That is it. I will name them off one more time. It's California, Kansas, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Wisconsin. That is it. Those are the only states as of right now that have been approved for this month, for February's emergency allotment. Now, what can we all expect from food stamps moving forward? This is a question that I, I, I probably got uh, a handful of times. Uh, I just got an email on this uh, probably about 30 minutes ago as well, that there's a lot of people that are wondering, well, what's going on? But what can we expect, right? Well, the first thing, the first thing that experts believe is going to happen is that Congress is going to wait. You're probably thinking, what? D did I hear you right? Yeah. The first thing, again, the, the reason why I think this is, is not even funny, but it, it, it's, this is Congress. This, this is, the people that are supposed to fight for us and, and give us what we need. Experts believe what they're gonna do is they're just gonna wait. They're gonna wait until the public health emergency ends. This is gonna happen around the middle of April or technically like April 11th. And then, according to experts, what will happen after that is then we will wait and see what the tax revenue looks like from the United States, from this season's taxes. The, the tax day, which is normally April 15th, has been pushed back three days. It will be, it will be uh, Tuesday, April 18th for 2023. Now, at this point, Congress will know, okay, we stopped the emergency, uh, the public health emergency, so we're not sending out that money. So we're actually gonna save a little bit there. We have this much money coming in from tax revenue. Okay, great. So at this point, Congress will have an idea of how much longer the U.S. can operate without raising its debt limit or without defaulting. And finally, after all that, uh, I think proof of hardship uh, is going to push Congress to pass something that will provide uh, increased SNAP benefits for a little bit longer. Because according to a few lawmakers, they have brought up the idea of tapering off benefits. This is exactly what we saw when uh, enhanced unemployment benefits were being distributed back in 2020, is we saw went from $600, was it to 400 to 200, or 600 to 400 to 300, I don't remember the exact, um, you know, the, the way we you know brought it down, the way we decreased benefits, but I know it was $600 per week, then I think it was $400 per week, then I think it was, wasn't it 300 or 200, something like that, but again, that's what lawmakers are discussing is let's taper off benefits so that people aren't going from $740 of, of uh, SNAP benefits, food stamps, all the way down to 335 in a single month and we expect them to live off that. So that's what's happening at this time. That is what we're expecting. Again, I know this isn't the greatest news, but I'm here to give you the facts. I'm here to give you what is actually happening, okay? So if you have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.